hi there. <laughs> that was a good one, buddy. Well, hi there. How are you guys doing today? This week, let's see. I've got lots of stuff I need to share with you. First of all, um, I'm on a new computer. Thanks to an incredible one of our stinking rad fans. His name is Oz. And he sent us this incredible laptop that, that I'm using today for, for the live stream. So thank you so much, yeah. Oz. And he sent some more stuff to us. Yeah, I sent a little a little package and a nice letter. And anyway, so I'll 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 read those later. I don't even know what's in the package just yet. Um, but th this is just absolutely incredible and such a huge blessing for us. So thank you so, so, so much. That was unbelievably kind of you and we are so, so grateful uh -huh. and uh yeah i just i don't know what to say it's it's a it's a game changer Clint just us. got it last night how are you liking it he's been uh, experimenting the last i'm time. loving it i'm loving it you know before this i had a, a mac laptop and so i've kind of gotten out of the the habit of using pcs but i did i was using a pc at work for my data analysis so i at least kind of know how to navigate around and mm. And everything and it's it's awesome it's awesome and i'm so excited and so grateful it's it's um uh, my old computer is from 2009 so it's quite an upgrade <laughs> thank you thank you also uh to uh reach out reptiles for sending the retic that peed on my other computer that made this a necessity I and mean, we're just <laughs> we actually i do love that retic though and we do love garrett absolutely absolutely um Oh, I should answer my question really quick. Should answer the question. So someone's saying hi to me. They're saying hi to you. Yeah. You want to say hi back? Hi. <laughs> you guys know Owen. His birthday is this coming Saturday, Sunday. Sunday. Sunday's his birthday, but his his party's tomorrow. And somebody. What kind of party are you having, Owen? A Jurassic World happy birthday. A Jurassic World happy birthday. And what animals are, are did you ask Daddy to bring to? Gus, 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 and um, I forgot. I thought you asked another big, big one. Daddy oh yeah, and Big Daddy. <laughs> Isn't that gonna be perfect? Everyone saying happy birthday to you, Owen. Hi. How old are you turning? Um, seven. Seven years old. Show them your cool teeth. <laughs> 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 somebody said can Gus Gus come to my birthday <laughs> yes live stream yeah he he, he really can we're, well we're, we're via our, our virtual tours he totally can and and I'm going to talk more about those later but uh it's actually kind of also because of my laptop getting peed on I've had to be creative in other ways and it's a lot more possible to do sort of a virtual tour of the reptile room and see all the cool stuff now and Gus Gus could totally come to your birthday party. And if you're local, he literally could come to your birthday party, <laughs> which is which is very cool. But um, somebody... someone's asking my favorite animal. Oh, why don't you why don't you answer? What's your favorite animal? Um, some kind of antelope. I don't remember what it's called. Oh, is it is it from Africa? Yeah. Was it uh, an impala or a? The ones that Springbok? are like yellow, and then she was really like them. Oh, the ones black that she's just... Um, oh. down their belly. Why is it? Why is it? Oh, a Thompson's gazelle. Yeah, not a gazelle. I have like a. Well, that's the one that cheetahs eat the most. Just, they got a black a, stripe down their side. Yeah. Thompson's Somebody gazelle. Said, I live in Africa. Springbok. Well, uh, I was, oh, Springboks would be a good one. Springbok. Yep. I like it. There's so many rad antelope. So I think that's your very favorite animal. You think? <laughs> I think the one's favorite animal is really the cheetah. Yeah. But then he says antelope because the antelope sometimes faster than the cheetah. Yeah, it's not the cheetah no more. Not not the cheetah anymore. It's been um, antelope for quite a while. Oh. I've heard him talking about antelope a lot lately. I think I think it's legit. Um, oh, Oz just said, "Hey, Clinton fam, ha and fam, happy Friday." Thank you so much, Oz. We are so grateful. I'm glad you're here too to see it on the inaugural your laptop live stream. Um. Owen, somebody sent you a present. All the way from over the ocean. Yes, this one this one came in from across the sea. Read, read yeah, I'm going gonna, gonna to tilt this says. down so everybody can see it. What now? Have him read what the blue sticker says. Clint Reptiles. No, the blue one. By Air Mail Part of Yep, and then it says Royal Mail. Royal and there's a, there's a picture of the queen. Wait, what queen? This queen. 
This came from oh, very yeah. far away. Open it yeah, up this and is... see what it is. What do you guys think it'll be? Very good friend, Joey. <laughs> Uh, oh, there's a car. It's very welcome. Happy to help. No, it's not a car. It looks like it's rewrapped with it. Whoa! It's actually wrapped in Christmas wrapping paper that's inside out. That's so cool. And then there's new wrapping paper. And the card. What, what are, what are these? Wrapping paper. What does that card say on it? To Owen, happy birthday, love, some. I don't know, know what that says. Maybe Liz? That is, oh, I think, I think you're right. Is this from Liz? I, I think Liz and Owen share a birthday. National Gorilla Day. National Whale Shark Day. Oh, Whale Shark, Penny's Gorilla. This is from Liz, I think. Swing into adventure. Um, yes, it is. This is from Liz. And have the best birthday ever. Have a very special birthday. Lots of love, Liz. Show them the card, the inside. That's so cute. People are so generous. You guys are amazing. Fun. All right, Owen, are you ready to open your present from Liz? Yeah. This has been a lot of fun already, and we haven't even gotten to the gift. Thank you so much, Liz. Yeah. You're so kind. And it's in the box. All right, so... It was wrapping paper, and then with more wrapping paper, and then inside of that wrapping paper is a box. And inside of the box is another box, and inside Wait, of that in box... Here? Read it, read it. Blue Barons. Blue Barons Racer. Whoa, it's got the hatch date. It's got all this cool stuff. So it's just like a real snake. Pop that lid off. Don't be afraid. It's a tarantula. <laughs> Wait, no, it's furry. What is that? Holy cow. Pull it out, pull it out. Show everyone. <gasps> show them, show them, show them. Made that. Oh my goodness. It's amazing. Blue Baron's racers are gorgeous, beautiful snakes, and they've got kind of a rhino nose to them. And this is exactly Ooh. what their pattern is like. Holy cow. I'm sure she made that. I've been wanting it to get into wool sculpting. I don't know what it's called. Wool thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's so That's amazing. Cool. What do you say, buddy? Thank you. Thank you, Liz. That was so thoughtful of you. Holy smokes. Do you love it, Doodle? Yeah. That is really neat. Are you going to show what Lala? What is it called? Yeah. Um, a racer? A blue racer. Blue yeah. Baron racer. Baron's Baron racer. racer. That is so cool. Thank you so much, Liz. That's super fun. You should put it back in this box because that's its house. And then you should take it and show it to Lola and Papa T. Yeah. What are you going to do right now? Me? Uh huh? I don't know. Grandma and Grandpa are here. Clint's mom and dad. Yeah, my, my parents are here. My dad's here for the first time in a year and a half. Uh, and, and they've come for Owen's birthday. So they're, I, they're taking the kids to eat at a fun restaurant and go play at a park. You gonna have fun? Yeah. Love you, pal. Mm. Love oh. you, buddy. Have fun. Give me nice. Mm. Well, that was awesome. Thank you so much, Liz, and thank you, Oz. Holy smokes, we've been just super blessed today. Super I'd say. Blessed. Um, I wanna I wanna tackle a question really quickly, which is, what does Clint have in common with a vulture? Any thoughts? <laughs> it's it's so dumb. It's so dumb. Are you ready? Sorry for the dumb. Don't know. Both stinking rad. You're both stinking rad. <laughs> You're both bold a lot. You eat your food when it's dead. He's a scavenger. Do you munch on roadkill? He he. J K. Wingspan and the ability to <laughs> turn over. Can I tell them a roadkill things? story? No. So uh, this is not <laughs> the answer, but I. I did my, my master's research on carrion beetles. And uh, carrion beetles are very cool. I studied as carrion that uh -huh. eat dead things. But uh, a professor that I was working with, one time he asked me if I pull over my car to flip over uh, roadkill carcasses to see what kinds of carrion beetles are on them. Nope. 
was my, I, I don't do that. That has, ne I've never even considered doing that for a second. Like, oh, there's a long dead animal. Let's see what's on that. No, that's where I draw the line. I do Something flip. Else. Something else? Yes. What is this? That's it in my box. It's in your, it was in your box? Yeah. Hmm? I think those are from no, Lala. That's a different box. That's Penny's no, two cents. No, it was actually in my box. No. Okay, somebody put it in there. <laughs> oh, I thought there was a giant box that we just hadn't noticed. Um, I love you. <laughs> bye, pal. Okay. So, uh, okay. Anyway, I don't do that. I do flip over every piece of corrugated aluminum and uh, particle board that I find in a field, though. For sure, because there's cooler stuff Nukes on there. commander said resistant to, to diseases found in carrion. Maybe. All right, are you ready for the answer? It's so dumb. It's just carrion. You and vultures have carrion and mm -hmm. not. Because vultures eat carrion, and I have decided to carry on with the live streams. <laughs> I'm so sorry, everyone. <laughs> sorry. Oh, look at the numbers just plummeting. Everybody's leaving. They're That's like, not oh, true. The worst. That was the worst. <laughs> I am so sorry. But I am super excited about, about being here today. So let's see. What what is next on our on our Michelle agenda? Michelle said, oh boy. Yes, yes. You should all. Oh dear. Anyway, that's what I have in common with. The, the dad bolt. is strong with this one. <laughs> My apologies in advance. It's so bad. Um, as I understand it, we have lots of questions today. It looks like there was already a, uh, a bunch of Patreon questions. Uh, it was a bunch of Patreon questions. I think I thought there was already a, a super, super chat. Chats. There are. Should we start with a super chat? Let's start. Super chat again. <gasps> super chat. And now make a face while you do it. Super chat. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Simone said. Anthony, which we know very well. Now. Yes. Um, hi there, my friend. What are your opinions on Dasypletus scabra? D a s y p e l t i s. Let me let me Google them real quick. Do they make good pets? D a s o p. D a s y. D okay, Daisy. P e l. P e l. T a s. Oh, egg eating snakes. Um, looking forward to booking another Zoom soon. I, I, egg eating snakes are really neat. There are some major downsides to egg eating snakes. One of them being uh, if you get hatchlings, hatchlings need a fairly steady supply of finch eggs, which might not be that hard to come by if you have a bunch of finches or if you have a friend who has a bunch of finches. But for normal people, like I don't know where you go to get a bunch of finch eggs. And then, you know, you can upgrade to quail. It's easier to get quail eggs. Not very many of them are going to be big enough to eat chicken eggs. And so it seems like eggs are a delightful source of, of food for a snake compared to rodents, but it's kind of not that easy. And, and most of the egg eating snakes that you'll see for sale are capt are not captive bred. They're, they're wild caught, uh, which is also far, far less than ideal. Good. Good question. Um, this one's really sweet. It's from Varicless, V A R I K L I S. I said, Well, hi there, Clint. Just want to say you're a personal hero and inspiration of mine. So thank you for everything. My ball po po my ball python Floyd says hi. That is so kind of you. You guys are so amazing and so kind to me. I'm just I'm just so grateful that you guys are here. And uh, thank you for, for supporting our channel, for supporting our family and for supporting the mission of this channel and what we're trying to accomplish here. We're so grateful. So, so grateful. Somebody asked a good question. So do they digest the eggshell? Usually they've got some protrusions on their vertebrae that crack the eggshell. On the chest? Well, it's on their vertebrae, which is on the backside. So. But you're doing your hand here. Well, so that's because I can't use. stab myself through. <laughs> if I put it back here, on their vertebrae, see what I'm... But they've got some protrusions on their vertebrae that break the egg shell, and they usually swallow everything inside of the egg, and then they kind of spit the egg shell back out. Really? Yeah. I did not know that. That's cool. It's like It looks like this. Are you ready? Okay, so, so first off, the swallowing. You've seen that. I can't really simulate that. But after they crack it, then they go... 
Really? Yep. Out comes that eggshell. Awesome. Nuh-uh. Mm -hmm. I have to scoot it back like that? Yep. That is so <laughs> scary. Okay. Aren't you glad you came? See, that's for those of you who stuck past my dad joke. Yeah. Lauren Bevel, who uh, is really nice. Yeah. When you did your dad joke, she said, I can't lie. I'm actually laughing. <laughs> she just sent a $10 super chat. So last night we had a storm and my usually very chill hog nose was a hissy mess. Mm. Is there maybe a correlation between snake behavior and barometric pressure? Glad the live stream is carrying on. Yay! I'm really excited too. I'm so glad we're still doing these. Yes, reptiles in general seem to be very, very perceptive about pressure changes. Uh, and in fact, a lot of times... Uh, breeding cycles are, uh, and especially egg laying cycles. This is also very, very true with amphibians, but they're, they can be hugely uh, correlated with storm systems. And, you know, in, in, in some cases, you know, if you're, if you're in a place where you're not getting a storm system coming through, honestly, like we've had this year in Utah, it's been super dry forever. We haven't had a rain system come through in forever. And that caused a problem when Dave Kaufman was here. We couldn't find much because it's so stinking dry. Where were the creatures when it's dry? They are deep underground, most of them. Uh, and so, you know, you need actually a storm system to come through for things to start laying eggs and breeding and doing things like that. But they're very, very able to detect these sorts of things. Interesting. That's really interesting. Let's see. Jacqueline Liz. Zoha. It looks French. So I don't know if I should say Lizote or Lizote or the teaser title. I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My archaeology lab is all tuned in. We love you. Keep up the dad jokes. We'll give our carry on beetle colony a treat for you. Your whole archaeology lab is here? That's so cool. Holy smokes. Hi, guys. <laughs> Thank you for supporting us. Where are you? What time is it here? There, wherever they are. Oh, You're God. asking them? Yes. In archaeology land? Yes, in archaeology land. Righteous. <laughs> what the? Okay. Should we go to Patreon? Yeah, let's, let's do some Patreon. Apparently, word on the street is there's a crazy amount of Patreon questions today, so we will do our best to get through them all. Yeah. Um. Do you want to tell them about Patreon real quick? Yes. Yes, I do want to tell you guys about Patreon. Patreon is so amazing. I can't begin to tell you how much Patreon has done for us and how grateful we are for Patreon because it has allowed us to upgrade our equipment, to really um, travel places like, like when we traveled to Nerd, hopefully someday. I, I, I want to travel all kinds of places to show you things that I just don't have access to locally. And uh, I mean, I, I saw Anthony's asking a question about dragon snakes. I know where there are dragon snakes, but not here. And so, you know, like Patreon has made a lot of, when we went to Tinley, Patreon has made these sorts of things possible for us. And, you know, as our way of saying thank you, we've got a lot of cool features, early Jason video releases, really extra videos called Patreon Extras, which you guys got to see one just the other day. There's one of those every week. Uh, and uh, um, among other things, patrons, which are actually, I, I want to stop referring to them as our patrons at Patreon because they are our rad fans and stinking rad fans. Those are who they are, but our, our rad fans and stinking rad fans at Patreon can submit uh, questions for these live streams, and we try to get through all of them. As I understand it, there's a bucket load today, and honestly, I was talking to Jason, he's like, what are we going to do when there get to be too many? He's like, we might have to start selecting them, like, or maybe we'll have to start doing more live streams to get through all the questions. So anyway, we are maybe so grateful to you guys. just for Patreon. For oh! Yeah, that might be where we have to go someday is we might have a super secret Patreon live stream. We'll have to talk this over, see what you guys all think. But I don't know. I don't know. Something. Um, but we are so grateful for you guys. And thank you. Thank you for supporting yes, us. Thank you so it's, much. It really is life altering for us. And and it's helped this channel to become so much more than it ever could have been without you. It is literally life altering. Clint and I are giving up on a lot of incomes this year to really focus on YouTube and the channel and the room and stuff. So it's a little scary. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little scary, but thanks to you guys, we don't have to be quite as scared. 
You ready? I am ready. Okay, here's our first Patreon question from Mitchell McKenzie. Okay. I've made this comment before, but I think it's worth saying it again. You deserve to have a decent TV show clip. For me, you're right up there with the greats like Steve Irwin and Sir David Attenborough. You're an inspiration. Keep up the great work. That is so nice of you to say because those are like two of my personal heroes and favorite people. And on top of that, you know they they have led incredible lives that are you know like anyone Full anyone would dream adventure. of yeah. having adventures like that and so that is so so kind thank so you nice. um anthony simone our mm -hmm. friend again. oh yes if you could observe and or interact with extinct reptiles other than dinosaurs which would you choose personally i'd love to see i would love to observe varanus priscus megalania super giant monitor oh that's cool. um so I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think my ancient reptiles, one of them I would really, really like to observe are the pterosaurs. Because be they're you know, not only are they amazing, but there's a lot of question about just how much flying ability they might have had. Uh, one of them is like Quetzalcoatlotus, which is an absolutely gargantuan uh, pterosaur, was much, much larger than really anything capable of flight today. Much, much larger. If you notice things like albatross, an albatross has a heck of a time getting in the air. And, and that's largely because it is right sort of at the maximum threshold of the size that's possible to fly. And so there's a lot of question as to whether or not these big pterosaurs could, could fly. There's also questions as to whether or not dinosaurs like T-Rex could run just because of the size of their bodies. And, and they're basing all these estimates based on modern organisms. I think because of different atmospheric composition at the time, that their muscle performance might have been greater than that of modern organisms. And so maybe they could fly. And I would like to see that. Yeah, that's really neat. Very, very much. But I guess I'd have to see that in their time period. Do I get a time travel? <laughs> Richard Hall said, do you think reptiles prefer someone over another? I have an on anaconda hmm. hog nose. He always does the cobra and hisses at my wife, but he's fine with me. What can we do to help the situation? He's actually her snake, but he doesn't seem to like her. That is a great question. People ask me about that all the time. It's like, do they know you and do they like you? And it, the reality is with an animal that with that great of an olfactory sense, I guarantee to you that they know you versus other people. The bigger question is, do they care? And I don't know if they care that it's you versus another person all that much. But I, I will tell you that your behavior while handling them may play a major role in uh, you know, how, how they approach you. It's, it's not necessarily because it, you know, has this preconceived notion that it likes you, but if you're, if you're very, very calming for a snake and provide absolutely no threat to them versus other people who are just not able to read their body language as well and act in a more erratic way, they are going to be much calmer with you than other people. Interesting. That'd be a good experiment, I think. Oh yeah. See if they, yeah. well, and actually there've been a lot of, I, I was actually talking about this uh, just yesterday that, uh, you know, there, there've been a lot of cool experiments done and, and people who are doing a lot of training of snakes using olfactory cues and they, they can be trained. And so that, that a, a snake could learn that by your smell, that you're never a threat and you're a delightful thing. I think that's completely not only plausible, but likely that they do know you. And if they have a, a history of good experience with you, they probably feel pretty good with it. That's really cool. Um, Flying Crow Coffee Company said, would really love to see- Flying Crow Coffee Company. Yeah. <laughs> would love to see an episode on Chuck Wallace. I have always had a special place in my heart for them. They're like American Euromastics. If you follow Dave Kaufman's channel, you know that we were looking for Chuck Wallace. For days. Yeah, four days. And I had with me a table and a script on Chuck Wallace so that I could do in the field a Chuck Wallace, the best pet reptile video. We did not find any Chuck Wallace, but um, I'm, I know people that have them. I, we have to do a Chuck Wallace video. They're amazing. They're really cool lizards. That's awesome. Greta Frost said, do you recommend any specific breeders of Western hot nose? Oh, uh, there are lots of great ones. Um, do you remember where you got yours? Well, mine have not been directly from breeders might have been rehomed to me 
all of them. Mm. Um, but but uh, Great Basin Serpentarium is a, a great place to go. Um, somebody around here, her name is Amanda. <laughs> she produces some amazing stuff, but really expensive hognose morphs. Um, I think Nerd works with hognose. BJ Pace, I think he works with hognose. I'm trying to think. There's some people I know. Lots. There are lots of great hognose breeders out there. That was the reality. Daniel Gonzalez. Sorry, I don't know why I'm yawning. Daniel Gonzalez said, Hi, Clint. Sorry for the repeat question, but the prior video seemed to cut off an extreme, and I didn't get to hear your answer. I'm really fascinated with mm -hmm. evolutionary influences on animals. My question is, what are the advantages in being a slow growth to sexual maturity in an evolutionary sense versus quick maturity rates? Thank you for your time and for all that you do. Ah, that's a great question. Who's a great question? In fact, that is right in harmony with what I, I did for my master's degree is in uh, life history evolution. So we talked about this actually a little bit in our Black Widow video and our, our follow-up Black Widow video, I think is where we really got into detail on this. But when you grow for a long time, especially as a female, so as there's different, different benefits for females versus males to getting big. For females, the benefit of growing for a long time is that you can get a large body cavity which will allow you either to have a lot of offspring all at once or very large offspring all at once. And both of those can be very, very, um, those are very beneficial. More or bigger, in either case, those are good for the likelihood of your offspring surviving to adulthood. If you mature very young, you either have fewer or smaller offspring and both of those are bad for the probability of your offspring surviving to adulthood. And so there's a huge benefit to living a long time. The downside, of course, is you might not live long enough to reproduce at all, and then your fitness is zero, and your genes that coded for you delaying maturation, they don't get passed on to the next generation. And those that did reproduce, they do, and so populations shift towards maturing younger. For males, it's different. For males, uh, you know, they males can produce enough sperm usually from a pretty young age. So there's a, a good reason for males to mature very young. And, uh, you know, many species do. This doesn't tend to happen, though, if males engage in combat with one another. Ma when males engage in combat, then small males that mature young don't get to mate at all. And only those that delayed maturation and again, this is probably not a choice they're making, but it's encoded in their genes. Those that matured at an older age and larger body size, they can monopolize opportunities to mate. Hooray! Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> Sherry, our friend Sherry. LBW. LBW. Gaboon Viper. And I got to talk to Sherry this last week and see her amazing collection of real reptiles and also uh her her cool yeah she's got a lot of cool sculptures That's like that awesome. by the same artist really awesome um, anyway really enjoyed the one-on-one -on -one this week we'll have to do it again in the near future what is your opinion on breeding geckos with polydactylism if everything else is normal in them crested gecko specifically any reptile in general okay so uh first off um sherry was just talking about doing one-on-ones which i'm gonna have jason throw up a a link oh he just he already did. man he is so good he, he's he's like ahead of my brain. Yeah. But um, anyway, I would love to, to talk to all of you guys, to be perfectly honest. It's just amazing, and it's literally keeping the reptile room alive. So thank you so much. Uh, yes, then polydactyly. Polydactyly. So polydactyly is having extra toes. <laughs> I like that every time you say it, you have to do... Oh, this, is, this is my polydactyly. 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 <laughs> I actually had a, a really fun experience. I think I've it seems like this isn't the first time we've talked about polydactyly, but I was uh, talking to to a friend of mine in Peru about polydactyly, and he was like, no, I don't believe that they're, like, I've never heard of this. This isn't a thing. And that very day, we met a little girl with two thumbs. On so, each hand? Just on one hand. Uh, and she's an identical twin. And the, twin and the other twin thumb. didn't have it, and she didn't have it on both. So it's probably a somatic mutation. That caused... She stole her twin's thumb? Well, no, the, the, the twin had a thumb. <laughs> the twin didn't have three thumbs. Oh. <laughs> I literally thought. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But as far as polydactyly goes, I, 
I actually I was unaware of these crested geckos with polydactyly. Uh, I don't know if it's genetic or not in in uh, these geckos. I'd say there's probably a good chance that it is. I've seen polydactyl cats though before, which it was a really mean cat too, and it had seven toes on every foot, so that's a lot of claws. But um, anyway, you know, if it's not impeding their jumping ability, then I guess you know polydactyly and crested geckos is as legitimate as any other morph. And uh, if, if you like toes, <laughs> that's the gecko for you. Oh, dear. <laughs> okay, Gordon to Heat Bacon says, what does Clint have in common with vultures? One, both Clinton vultures don't swear. Two, both in Clint Clinton vultures don't drink alcohol. Three, both Clinton vultures lay eggs. Wait, what? <laughs> Pretty close. <laughs> that was the whole comment, even the wait, what? Betty <laughs> <laughs> Morgan said, um, gonking lofus call... <laughs> <laughs> I feel like such a fool <laughs> reading these. Gongilophus columbrenus, the Egyptian or Kenyan sandboa. Are oh. sandboas as likely to carry IBD as BCI and BCCs? What makes a boa a boa? I mean, what characteristic separates them into the boa family? That is such a great question. I haven't heard as many concerns about the the sand boas as I have about the the boa imperator and the boa constrictors. Um, if you know more about that than I do, please please let me know it down in the comments because it's that's entirely true. I just I, I don't worry about it with sand boas, and I do worry about it a lot with uh, with the 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 bigger boas. Um, what makes a boa a boa is a great question. So. There, there are a lot of things, you know, minor skeletal things, but, uh, you know, shared lineage, shared, shared ancestry is a big thing. One of the big things is um, they are not one of the advanced snakes. So the, the boas and pythons, maybe a few other small groups, uh, they've got vestigial hind legs called spurs. And, and a major difference between the boas and the pythons is that the boas give live birth and the pythons lay eggs. There's a, there's a, a snake called a calabar uh, burrowing python, which gives live birth, but it turns out it, it's really a sand boa. It's not really a python to my understanding. I do have a major boa question though. It's been on my mind for a while and I don't have an answer just yet. So it my, my question. Um, no, I think I'm okay. Yeah. My question is about the Madagascan boas. So, you know, you, you do have a few of the, the uh, sand boas in Africa and, and, and in, the, in the old world, but the, uh, the larger boas tend to be all new world. And then, then you've got things like the Dumeril's boa there in Madagascar. And I'm curious, are, are they more closely related to the sand boas? Or, or is there some explanation for how those boas ended up in Madagascar? I don't know. And I'm really curious about it. So if you know, let me know. Um, Jake Krinkle has two questions. Could you do a video on the blue-tailed skink? And what would be a better first pet, your mastix or chuckwalla? Okay. Uh, I would like to do... So there are many skinks with blue tails, for the record. Uh, Blue tails are really common, mostly on juvenile skinks, and actually some other lizards, a lot of whip tails and things have, have blue tails as juveniles, uh, which is very beneficial for escaping predation without even losing your tail. And if you're going to lose something, having it be your tail. And a lot of times they fade out. But usually when people talk about blue tailed skinks, they're talking about five line skinks, which are awesome. And I love five line skinks, and I would love to do a video on them. Um, that would be awesome. That'd be so awesome. And then would be a better first pet, oh. domestics or chickwalla? I don't know. I'd have to do like a head to head. They're they're both they're very both very similar in a, in a lot of ways. They're yeah. they're sort of high temperature desert vegetation eating lizards. One is an agamid and one is an iguanid. But uh, you know, I I very much think of the chuckwallas as the new world domestics. So. That's a good question. I, I would say yeah, as long as you're prepared and you find a good a good breeder and you consult with them, um, you're going to be happy with either one. Um, Puppy Dog says top five interactive Puppy dog. reptile videos. I met Puppy Dog. Really? Yeah. His name's not really Puppy Dog. Uh, Sorry, carry on. Top five interactive reptiles video or top five display reptiles video someday. 
I think those are both great ideas. I honestly have a, a reptile right now that I'm so I, I I already teased you about it last week. Um, but I will tell you I've been talking I've been actually showing it to the live stream people. Uh, but it is or the 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 one the face to face people. So they've got a sneak peek. But have you? You've been showing it up. Mm -hmm. wow. It is it is an incredible display and interaction animal. Just unbelievable. <gasps> hey baby girl. Have you woken up? <laughs> Look who's here, guys! It's Miss Martha. She's so she's cute. getting so big. <laughs> Look at her. Should we should we go back to? Uh, yeah, that's what I was thinking. And we have super chat. that other thing from us. <gasps> oh. oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> so let's see. Let's go down to. Oh, baby girl, I'm sorry. I'm not very good at this. Anthony says, "Have you ever seen a dragon snake?" They're one of the most unusual snakes I've ever come across. They are. I So here's the deal with dragon snakes. Dragon snakes are stupendously weird and uh, and very cool looking. If you've never seen a dragon snake, they're sort of gray. They've got these like black keel spikes coming off of the back of them, a really unusual head structure. They're just super neat. And so far... People have not been really successful keeping them, but I think there are a few people that are having some success. So they're, they're brought in. They're almost all imports in really bad shape. A lot of them, they seem to have difficulty getting them feeding. I think they're mostly amphibian and, and fish specialists in the wild. And, and so most of the time what you're doing is you're spending a few hundred dollars to watch a really cool snake die. And, and that's, that's the case right now. Now, there are some people that are really, really good with animals that generally people fail with. Uh, you know, something I've seen lately, Draco Volans, the, the flying dragon, one of the coolest lizards in the world. And, and it's one that until recently, you know, nobody ever had success with them. They just watched them die. And, and now there are some people who've really been working hard with them and they've got captive bred babies. And so, you know, like I think within the next five to 10 years, Draco Volans will be something that you can get with a really complete care guide and captive bred babies, and you're probably going to have great success. And, and I think the same is probably true of dragon snakes someday, but not this day. She's so freaking cute. Mm. I can't handle her. Sorry. Um, Evan Rubio sent $20. Thank you so much, Evan. Hi, Clint. What a 5x3x3 five five three three tank be good as a starter tank for an Argentine tegu. When the tegu outgrows the tank and I get a bigger one, should I get an Aki or a Jules Lacerda? Oh, gosh. Okay, so 5x3x3 five three three would be fine for a young tegu. I will tell you, I think I think I had Gus Gus in, in a 5x3x3-ish tank for a while. And, I mean, he did. It. He, he They'll outgrow it fairly quickly. Um, so definitely be working on that bigger tank right away. And it would be awesome for a, an Aki or a Jeweled Lacerda. It, it just sort of depends on what you want. Honestly, if you've already got a Tegu, a Jeweled Lacerda is more like the Tegu than the Aki is. The Aki is sort of a completely different sort of a creature. And you did notice in our recent video, I said that the Aki beats the Jeweled Lacerda as the ultimate small pet lizard. So. Wow. No big deal. Um, let's see. Natasha Peterson said, got my first adorable Phidippus brigius yesterday, and it made me think about other arachnids I'd love to keep. So am Amblith Piggy, best pet invert. I I, I gotta be honest. Uh, I like invertebrates, especially arthropods, well, and cephalopods and well, all kinds. Oh, I, I like just let's just I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something. I mean, before this stream, people were asking me what my favorite mammal is. And I like reptiles ever so much because they remind me of dinosaurs and they're so cool. And they're some of the best pets that you can get that are uh, like wild animals that are actually something that's reasonable to keep in your house and interact with and stuff. But I love all kinds of things. And I love arthropods just to an unbelievable level. And apparently so do you guys. Because the arthropod videos that we've made have actually been extremely popular 
uh, with you. And, and I love making them. And so all of a sudden my brain is just like, you should make lots of arthropod videos. And I'm like, no, 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 you still gotta, you still gotta do mostly reptiles. Cause, cause I'm just like, what? Cause all of a sudden it's like Pandora's box is open. I'm just like, huh? there's just like so many cool ones. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to play, play around with some arthropods from time to time. I will try to uh, keep it in moderation, but it's just, oh, there's so much cool stuff. This world is so full of rad creatures, and I'm so excited I get to share them with you guys. Okay, both Michelle and Jason are talking to me about Gabby. Oh, there it is. Okay, when we get to her. There, I finally found it. I got confused. I'm not confused anymore, though. <laughs> Just crazy. Okay, um, Sherry, our friend Sherry said, really glad these live chats are continuing. I look forward to them every week. It is, it is so much fun doing these live chats. I, I just, I love it. And, you know, and like, like, honestly, there, there are some people that I've talked to, you know, two, three, four times now. Like, I feel like we're old friends and, you know, we start talking, you know, we've been talking about zoos and things like, Oh, when you come out here, I'm going to show you around the zoo. I'm like, yes. Like, like I'm so excited for that. I, I, uh, Anthony, I think he's going to take me to the Bronx zoo That's awesome. eventually. And I, 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 we talked about seeing that LA zoo. And so I, I honestly, all of a sudden I'm like thinking about, you know, someday if I could make it, if I could somehow make ends meet doing this, I would love to go on a nationwide zoo tour. That would be so cool. And then expand it outside of the nation. Clint, mine and Clint's story uh, started at the zoo. That's started. true. Zoos our are, first like, special our that. first like really significant real date yeah. was to the zoo and it was like the both, greatest date ever. It was only like our first real date and we both felt like this is it. Yeah. Search is over. To quote to quote uh Simon and Garfunkel, they say that it's all happening at the zoo. <laughs> I do believe it. I do okay, believe it. Okay, Jacqueline. Ellie's just like enough. <laughs> No more Simon and Garfunkel. I love Simon and Garfunkel, but we have a lot to get to. <laughs> okay, sorry guys. The stereotype that archaeologists are afraid of snakes is actually pretty true. I'm the weird one. We are in Minnesota, and it's uh, 1.23 p.m. here. Uh, in my experience, archaeologists don't even know what snakes are, because they go, snakes, why does it have to be snakes? And then they look down in the pit, and it's all legless lizards. Yeah, it's true. Um, and I think that stereotype came from Indiana Jones or something. Yes, absolutely, yes. <laughs> Um, Anthony sent fifty dollars. Anthony, you are r ridiculous. Seriously. Thank you so much. He said, "For the reptile room, my friend, I'm immeasurably happy that you're continuing these live streams. The natural world, the natural world is lucky to have a person like you. Thank you, good friend, and thank you for inspiring others." Thank you, Anthony. I, I, I'm so grateful, and I'm super, I'm super glad that things are going to work out to continue these on because. Honestly, like there's such a boost for me, and I just, yeah. I just love it. It's so much fun, so much fun. Okay, let me take her. Oh, maybe for a minute, so I can open the package. Yes, okay. and then we have lots of more super chats. Just a second. Do you want to? I'm gonna give her a smooch, and then she's gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh dear. Thanks, Jeff. Hi, baby. Dear. All right. So this is from Oz, correct? Yes. Came with the computer. Oh, and Oz, he sent a note, too. I, I'm not going to read the whole thing because some of it's just instructions on how to use a computer. But this is from Oz, who is just an unbelievable person. Hey, Clint, enjoy the laptop. I hope it works out for you guys. It's a little workhorse. It is amazing. It's so much better than my laptop was pre, even pre-Python peeing. That's triple P. You're trying to go... What? I just need the blankie. Oh. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. And I'm back. This is, this is real life happening over here. Happy that it's going to a place where we put to good use. You'll also find a laptop sleeve, travel charger, and some surprise buttons in the package. Surprise buttons. I'm excited to see what this is. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Oh, and the buttons. Hope you don't mind. I have a button machine that I use to make some buttons out of my art sometimes, or even just witty ideas. <gasps> Are these that kind of buttons? Whip these up while waiting on the computer to reload. Feel free to keep or share. Sincerely, Oz. <laughs> buttons! I'm excited. No matter what kind of buttons these are, I'm excited. At first I was like, did he make the buttons on the keyboard? <gasps> oh my heavens! These are amazing. Stinking rad. Oh, that's going on the shirt. Oh, this is this is a good day, guys. 
There's all different ones in there. Yeah, there are. Well, I got to have more of them on the shirt here in a second. See if I can pin a button on myself without stabbing myself. All right. Stinking rad. It's his Royal Gusserton. Gus Gus. Yay, a Gus Gus button. Don't put them all on your shirt. Okay. We don't have time for that. Stinking rad only. <laughs> Sorry to be a <laughs> Well, hi there. <laughs> These are amazing. I love your giggle. Well, hi there in green. And then your giggle. Gus Gus. <laughs> <laughs> Stinking rad. More of those. Oh, boy. A white well hi there. Another one. I think those are all the types. Yep, let's see. I'll, I'll dig through in case there are any others that I haven't seen. Oh my gosh. I, this is nice because now I can put one on every. Yeah. I, I wish you all the best. Uh, let's see. It was about super dwarfs and Brazilian rainbow boas. Uh -huh. Okay, so super dwarf retics are really quite awesome. I'm actually planning to do a video on them very soon. And, you know, the, the reality is are amazing there's just really only one problem with them which is that they get to are we still lagging okay hopefully hopefully we're good now the, the problem with with retics is that they're just colossal and so the super dwarf is like all of the amazing personality sorry leisha's crying over there <laughs> I wish I cried that cute. The, the super dwarf is all of the personality and, the, you know, everything amazing about a retic, except not the giant eyes. Uh, rainbow boas. Rainbow boas are beautiful. Other than that, I don't think they make really good pets. I mean, they, they, they're, they're, they're not going to hurt you or anything. It's just... They are... They're for people a little bit of a shy snake, but <laughs> but mostly. <laughs> Sorry. My computer's gonna die, and this charger's not oh, working, so I have to get. Oh, gotcha. Your ads. I was apparently Alicia's <laughs> moved on to watching another channel. She's like, <laughs> you mind? Yeah. if your child has a common orthopedic, oh, yeah. now an interesting video. But anyway, they're they're a challenge. We will make a video on them. Um, I found a baby recently. Maybe at night. Uh, okay, we have to do these fast. I will give up. Okay, so but, uh, is this lightning round? Is uh, that why is it gonna die? Isn't it again? Yeah, but the charger's not working for some reason. Oh dear. I like the extra toes. I really like the get goes color and more. Yeah, well, uh, as long as it's not in super laggy, Jason. Just uh. Sent super, two super chats. Could you talk about Nerodia? No data. Okay. 